morning. Thank you for joining us at Elmville Presbyterian Church. Just have a few announcements this morning. Just a reminder that the new year 2020 is behind us. We welcome all reports and financial records for the annual report. Shirley would be happy to receive the statements in order to keep her busy and occupied during this lockdown. The annual meeting is tentatively reset for mid-April. There's a finance and maintenance meeting set for Monday, January the 11th at 7.30 here in the church where we will be following all protocols, the budget to be set for 2021. And also to remember, uh, Let's Do Lunch for this month has been canceled due to the shop, the not hacked yet, due to the lockdown. And I'd like to say uh, thank you to all the contributors that helped us uh, give three families a good Christmas and a special thank you for the Masons as they supplied all the toys so the money that you donated could be used for clothes. I think that's all I have. Are there any other announcements? Okay, thank you. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is, is to sing praises, praises to our God as we begin our worship. For he is gracious and builds up Jerusalem. He heals, he heals the brokenhearted. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He, he takes pleasure in those who fear him and in those who hope in his unconditional love. Puzzle and perplexities. 
It seems the more we discover as we look around us, the more we know how little we understand about living life at its fullest. We pray like the wise men who followed your birth, that we can search for you in our lives until we come into a relationship with you. And then we can go on searching with all of our heart, mind, and soul to discover more of your will and purpose for us. Lord Jesus, continue to surprise us with the wonder of your love and the awesomeness of your grace. May we know you, your compassion, and your goodness this day and every other day of our lives. Merciful God, your nature is to have mercy on us as we put the past behind us, helping us to begin again. Help us let go of hurts and build for the future. Teach us always to face the truth so that it may set us free. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our assurance of forgiveness. May the Lord our God, who is gracious and merciful, forgive our sins and deliver us from the temptations around us. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
verses 12 to 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gate. He blesses your, ch blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. reading from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasures of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will. So that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. And our gospel reading is John chapter 1, verses 1 to 13. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The International, International Space Station has shown us what it's like to do normal day-to-day -day tasks in the difficulty of zero gravity. It may be fun to fly or free float around the station, but how do you keep toothpaste on your toothbrush? Pens had to be redesigned so that the ink stayed at the tip. Things need to be tied down or sealed up tight, or they simply drift away. Astronauts are trained to do day-to-day -day tasks and chores in zero gravity. In zero gravity, absolutely nothing can be taken for granted. The current pandemic has shown clearly that the culture all around us, our culture, 
operates in zero morality. Family structures appear to be in the process of breaking down. Economic realities are such that the crowd with platinum credit cards are surviving very nicely, thank you. The food bank crowd are finding it more and more difficult to put the diminished scraps they receive into their hungry stomachs. Politicians become more and more helpless to produce any kind of recognizable leadership. And so society begins to think that we are powerless to affect change. As for morality or ethics, where, where did they disappear to? Just how much discomfort will we live with before we accept new ethics and morality with little or no personal cost or questioning of personal values? Here we are, starting down or staring down the path 2021 offers. And if you're like me, you're wondering where zero morality may be leading us to this year. What can we count on? What can we hold on to? What will keep us from floating off toward this or that without effort or forethought on our part? To go back to those astronauts, what happens when they leave the space station? They put on their space suits and take a space walk. Without their umbilical cord tying them to the space station, they drift off into unlimited space, and there would be no way for them to get back. In zero morality, what holds you back from meaningless? What will you do about the neo-Nazi organizations that teach hate and violence as their personal right? Then there's gang violence that has potential new members prove their allegiance by murdering a rival gang leader. How about a society that gives tax breaks to professional sports teams? while closing homeless shelters. Is it our right as a church of Jesus Christ to sit around and watch silently the drifting away of morality? So what is the role of God's church in 2021? Can you or will each of you show others an example of the gravity that our very souls need and require for life. It's only in and by God's grace that we can find a balance in life with all its shades of reality and morality. That means life lived in the Spirit, life secured by the Spirit. Verse 5 of our Ephesians text, God destined us for adoption as His children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of His will. On the other hand, zero morality seems to reflect the freedom of a life which floats around in. I argue with the notion that freedom lets you do whatever you want. Freedom doesn't allow you to do something if it feels good. Free to lie, free to cheat. Or will it bring you to joy? 
and final success. Free to get drunk or drugged out of your life and your mind. Will that bring you joy or escape? Air fridge door at home. Indeed, fridge doors all over the country are littered with stuff. Some of it's years old. Self-portraits, impressions, if you like, of dogs, cats, spiders, kids playing soccer, birds, misspelled words that cause emotion when they're interpreted. Love you, Grandpa. Love you, Grandma. Gifts. Gifts given to those loved simply to please them, simply to give them joy. That urge to give is where we need to give back to. Living life as adopted sons and daughters of God doesn't cramp our style or transform us into sour faced naysaying Presbyterian party poopers. Living in God's great gravity of grace, we become like little children, romping and running with joy, with the good pleasure we can bring before God. What our zero morality culture doesn't and cannot understand what scripture teaches about morality is that the ultimate pleasure principle is based on men and women living life as God intended it to be lived. A life filled with experiencing God's good pleasure. Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 17 God richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Luke 12, 32. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The universe is not a deep, dark, black sea on which our spaceship Earth is a platform and which we humans have been turned adrift without some training around hope and safety. Ephesians teaches that God has a plan, verse 10, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. God's plan brings humans and creation under the gravity of Jesus Christ's love and grace. There's no need for us to look for a place where we can anchor safely or smilingly pretend there's nothing we can do ever about the moral free stuff all around us. God's grace is offered will we accept it? Verse 12 so that we might live for the praise of God's glory. The pleasures of grace are yours, but they don't come cheap. You need to give up living to please yourself, then live a life that pleases God. Who do you want to please most? John 3, John 5, Verse 30 says, I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. Jesus Christ himself did not please himself. Did you know yet who you are going to please in 2021? What will your focus be? Jesus' was this, Hebrews 10, 7. I have come to do your will, O oh God. When will we realize whose we are? 
For we hear in Hebrews 10, 38, my soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. Or will we hear these words from Matthew 25, 21, well done, good and trustworthy servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Which will it be? Will 2021 see you on the way following Jesus? Amen. Let's pray. The Lord is good. His love is eternal. And His faithfulness lasts forever. New year, new hopes, new problems, new resolutions. Same old us. We are old habits at the beginning of another year. It's hard to be different. Will we be? Eternal God, you know us as we are. You have seen many of us, our families and our friends, start this particular year with a sense of frustration, anxiety and disappointment. Help us to see and to remember that we can put ourselves exactly the way we are this minute into your hands, for your hands have been shaping lives from generation to generation. In your unchanging, unconditional love, we would lose our feelings. As whatever may crumble or break this year, your faithfulness will last forever. Our God granted even that each one of us praying this prayer, whatever we are at this moment, may live this year, 2021, believing, trusting, relying only on your love so that at this year's end, we'll be not just one year older, but one year nearer to you. Amen.
Let us bow our heads. Today we extend our prayers to all our congregation members. In particular, please keep these people in your prayers as they journey through unknown and difficult times. Our thoughts and prayers are with you all. We pray for Carolyn Heads, Sandra McNutt, Marilyn Cole, Sydney Brown, Regina Ann Cowan, Claire and Lillian Robinson, Sharon Crozier, Greg Olson and his mother, who's dealing with COVID-19 in Red Deer, Alberta, Paul and Marlene Lamby, Doug Lamby, Stan and Jackie Ritchie, Russell Ritchie, Herb and June Ritchie, and Bob Ritchie. We also want to pray for Tom and Colleen McGinnis and their family as they mourn the loss of Colleen's sister, Anne Marie Calhoun of Midland, as she leaves behind her husband and four small children. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us when we pray. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.